in the last video we completed our uh, multiplayer class so before watching this video make sure to watch the last video in the playlist in which we coded the whole multiplayer class so in the last video we coded this whole class um, so if you want to understand the single player class you first have to understand this class since they are directly related so make sure to understand this video before watching this one uh, so if you, you have already seen it and you already uh, are familiar with all these things so let's proceed so let's look at the working of single player class so we have the same vari variables so uh, and uh, here i am overriding the back key just like in the last video uh, it's doing the exact same thing so this is our on create method uh, this is do also the exact same thing like last time but in this case the name 2 will be fixed so in the name 2 if you remember the last uh, uh, class uh, let's look at here so in the last uh, class we fixed uh, in the case of uh, multiplayer we fix the name uh, we fix the name to be computer so as you can see here uh, so here so if the mode is single player then we uh, selected the second name as computer so name computer name will be fixed so player 2 will always be computer that's what it will its name will be so here is the game begins function so uh, game begins uh, works exactly the same way first uh, we choose a simple symbol then we do a toss and then we first in the case of uh, this uh, if toss is one then it is the turn of player that is name one but if the value of toss is two then it is the turn of second player so in this case there is a slight variation first uh, i am setting this to computer's turn the text view then I am setting the value of Z to 2. Then I am calling a function called computer turn. So through this function computer will do its turn. But I don't want computer to do its turn in like 1 nanosecond. I want to add a little de delay before computer does its turn. So that's why I am using the handler class. I am I have created an object of the handler class. Then I have I am using the post delayed function of the handler class so it is used to de delay a function. So I am using delaying it by 800 milliseconds. So this function will be executed after 0 0.8 seconds. So after 0 0.8 sec second computer turn will take place. So if the z value of z is equal to 2 uh, sorry toss is uh, equal to 2 this function is executed. So let's see the working of this function. So this is the function where we have pro programmed our computer. So let's see. First, uh, I am getting the ID of all nine buttons. So I and I'm storing them into these objects B1, B2, B3. These are all objects of the button class which have the all values of the grid so all these grids will be stored into these those objects like b1 b2 b3 b4 5 6 7 8 9 and above i've created nine string variables called button 1 to 9 then i'm using the variable called move then i am getting the text uh, text from uh, these buttons so I, I will see whether these buttons are empty or whether they have p1 symbol or p2 symbol so now i am uh, programming the computer so if the value of count is zero that the computer has its first turn that the the very first turn is computers so computer win the task wins the task in that case i am setting the value of move to 5 so the value of move will be 5 that is this grid so if computer wins the task it will always 
put its mark into this this uh, block the middle one then i have added all these cases that is for example if the value of count is 1 and uh, grade 5 is not equal to player 1 and grade 5 isn't equal to player 2 that is that uh, the if the user suppose the first turn is of user and the user does its turn here then computer will do its turn into the fifth block if it is the fifth is empty but suppose the fifth block is not empty then i programmed it uh, computer in that case computer will make it turn to this block or some other block so this is the programming of the computer how computer will make it stand so this is all here so let me get back to my function so this is where I have programmed the computer and uh, this is where computer will do its turn so uh, so that's uh, these are all the possible combinations so i have added every possible combinations i have added every possible combination into this uh, code so every possible combination imaginable has been added and uh, let's see what else is there so now if I'm programming computer to win so if the computer sees any winning combination it will be programmed so uh, in that case uh, computer will be programmed so let's suppose that uh, so first let me tell you one thing that p1 is the symbol of player 1 and p2 is the symbol of player 2 that is player 2 is always computer so you when you think of p2 think of computer so uh, let's suppose that grid 1 has symbol of computer and grid 2 has symbol of computer and uh, grid 3 isn't equal to uh, p1 or p2 then in that case the value of move will be 3 so let's uh, so this is the this is where computer is and this is also computer symbol so these blocks are filled and this isn't equal to com player or computer that is this is equal to empty then computer will make it turn here so in that case it will win the game so we are making our computer intelligent able to make moves so these are all the possible combinations uh, required to make a great com computer uh, like an AI so <laughs> uh, based on these combination the value of move variable will be stored move variable stores the grid number which will be executed then I am using a variable called duplicate which I will explain in a minute so by default duplicate is false so duplicate will determine whether computer is trying to make a move to a place which is already uh, the place which is already taken so these are all the combination but what if neither of these combination is true no if condition from these is true that will could occur right so in that case i have created a do while loop in which computer will generate a random number from 1 to 9 so based on this random number uh, we will get the button id right and then we will store this button id into uh, this variable and then we will uh, get the text from the button uh, just like last time and then if we will check that if uh, if the selected button which the user has selected has is uh, has already been filled so suppose uh, this button uh, this is the button computer has selected but it already contains the symbol in that case i will set the value of duplicate to true and uh, the loop will be executed again since this condition is true so while duplicate is true this will keep executing so 
as soon as uh, the unique empty block is chosen the loop the loop will be terminated so here i am getting the button id just like the last class determining upon the value of move so if the value of move is 1 then i will get the button id of the 1 so suppose the user has selected value of move 5 so then i will get the button id of the fifth block and then i will use the button dot perform click so button dot perform click is used to uh, perform a click without the user so it will automatically perform the click so in that case the value of uh, in that case the function is executed button is clicked so button is clicked suppose the user has pressed sorry computer has selected 5 so fifth button is clicked so it will come into this grade 5 function and uh, this gameplay 5 will be called gameplay will be called let's look at the gameplay function so game gameplay function is exactly the same as you can see first we are getting the id based upon the num just like in the last video then we are checking this condition to see if block is empty or not but here is a slight change instead of uh, just simply ending the function i am calling the i am calling the function computer turn so the computer can make it turn. that's the only difference here everything else is exactly the same but here we have to make computer turn. so then the game will continue on until a combination is made in that case the game will be frozen until it is restarted or the app is exited exited i am also doing the file handling i am writing the data to file I have the exact same function just file names are different as you can see here I am using S in the end instead of M. So that's it for this video we will explore some other concepts but for now our project is pretty much complete. Uh, thank you for watching.